This na Dr. Bull from Durham, North Carolina with another edition of To Say Talk Me. This To Say Talk Me could tell the to e, but how we not get real way na salute. Listen and catch you yes. Sixty 
667. By that time, someone from America, from South America, called Rivkin, R-I-V-K-I-N, who professed to be an economist, came with the support of the American government and that type of thing, and proposed that the railway should be closed down and that we should go to roads, of course. The reason for that was <laughs> they wanted to sell their food, trucks, etc. And by the time you would know what was happening, we started seeing Ford trucks in Sierra Leone, particularly the Bowsers, to move petroleum products. I, anyway, I prepared my cabinet paper. I was not a cabinet minister. I was general manager of the area, although I had access to the prime minister and other ministers. And sent the, my proposals for cabinet. The proposals were received by the permanent secretary, Ministry of Transport. I have not put her name in the book. But she was Muriel Olu Williams. Muriel Olu Williams. The wife of the famous surgeon Olu Olu Williams. And she sat on my paper and didn't send it forward to cabinet. She had already got two Bowsers to be taking petroleum products, moving petroleum products to different parts of the country. I didn't know about that. And I went to the Prime Minister Albert at the time and said, Albert, what are you doing with my papers? And she, he said, Solomon, what papers? I said, I've prepared papers for the railway. It's only eight million dollars. It would look quite high. But I managed to get people who would give us the loan. He said, I've never seen those papers. I said, but you're joking. I sent those papers so two weeks ago and I've heard nothing at all about it. He said, Solomon, I have been asking myself. I have not seen any papers. And then I got furious. I almost lost my temper. I said, well, if you've got a system, a civil service, who should be sending papers to cabinets and the papers don't get to cabinets. What else would happen? And he also was annoyed. He said, Solomon, in cabinets we deal with papers which come before us. We don't deal with papers that we have not seen. I said, Albert, if that is your answer, here and now, I resign from the railway. He thought I was joking. I went to my office and wrote a letter of resignation as general manager of the railway and resignation as the economic advisor to the government, two important posts. He telephoned me to come to his office. I thought he was uh, wanting to deal with that. And without mentioning anything about that, he said, Solomon, I've got an assignment, urgent one for you to go. I was also in charge of getting regional arrangements between Sierra Leone, Liberia, Ivory Coast and Guinea. And he said there has been a problem between Guinea and Ivory Coast. And I want you to go over to Shekutsure, he is the, causing the problem. I said, yes, yes, Albert, I will go. At the time, my secretary for the regional organization was none other than Tijan Kaba, who was the president of two years ago. And Tijan and I went, we went to Shekotore. We left on, it was a Monday. We left on Monday and got to Conakry and I returned and I said, Albert, you got my resignation. What are you doing? 
Yes, sir, but that's not for me. I passed it on to the establishment secretary. I said establishment secretary or do establishment secretary. I have resigned. You can tell me where you want to, but I am no longer an officer of the government. And I'm taking it. I have given you notice, taking my leave. Okay, I resigned. And we got here. And the party I joined, APC, won the next elections. They saw there in the book uh, what I did. So I showed that we really won. I wanted to show that my guy uh, to teach him one or two lessons. Now, we come into this, the railway scene. After I resigned, the railway, while I was general manager, the railway had a disaster. A bridge got broken. The Mabang Bridge was broken. And I, at the time I was general manager, got in touch with the High Commissioner of Britain, who got in touch with the military in England. They first suggested Bailey Connections, Bailey Bridge. And I said no, I don't think that would be good. Although I was not an engineer, I had a lot of other helpers. And we settled on what was what was known as the calendar Hamilton span, which is what they are up till today. And we got the railway running within a year. Then I was in Parliament, APC Minister of Development, about a year after we won the election. Shaka Stevens, well, there was the rumor that two ministers were being sacked from cabinet. One was Hudson Taylor, he died three or four months ago, and the other was Solomon Pratt. I was not in Sierra Leone at the time, I was on mission out. I came, went to Shaki, the president, and gave him a verbal report. The next day was a Thursday, it was the normal cabinet day. On the Wednesday night, I received all my papers, my box of cabinet papers for the next day. I read them all as was my custom, so that I know what I would have to say or not to say in cabinet. We went to cabinet on the Thursday, and everything went on all right. I didn't know that something had happened to me. At the end of cabinet, the president said, Solo, will you please see me in my office? I said, oh yes, Shaki, I'll be coming. We generally have, just like you have refreshments here at the church, we have these refreshments. And uh, I went, people caught my colleagues, some of them shunned me. I didn't know what was happening. And when I went to see Shaki, the president, he said, so you would have heard that I am making a mini reshuffle. I said, yes, Shaki, Shaki, I, I, I heard that. Where are you sending me? Thinking that is, you no, know, it he was removing me from Ministry of Development to another ministry. And he said, to nowhere you are out of the cabinet. I was shocked. I said, do you really mean that, Shaki? He said, yes. I said, why? He said, what's wrong? I will not forget. In your interest and in the interest of the country, you should not be a cabinet minister. I said, you beat. He repeated, in your interest and in the interest of the country, 
you should not be a cabinet minister. I said, I understand Shakim. And we had a few chats. And I jumped into my car. Once I was going down by the cutting scheme, there was the there were the news news renders with the AP with the SIPP uh, newspaper. It was called Unity. Bold headlines. And the Fed was shouting, Jolly Boy out! Jolly Boy out! It had been published that uh, I had been sacked from cabinet. And I was only told that about half an hour previously by the president in his office. Now we come to the railway. Why was I sacked? There was a chap which you, who you would know about called Jamil Saeed Mohammed. He was a financier, a Lebanese, or half Lebanese, half Sierra Leone. And at the time, he had gone round Shaka Stevens and members of the cabinet, apart from the fact that I was considered persona non grata, uh, mem a spy from the uh, SIPP and some of them tamped me. They had agreed to close down the railway. They said if Solomon is a member of cabinet, this would never happen. He had made terms of what he would give them and that type of thing. And that he was going to get all the scraps sold, you will be surprised, for eight million dollars. The money which I wanted to do the first phase. And that was the reason why Shaka Sivin said, it is in your interest and the interest of the country that you should not be a member of cabinet. After I was sacked, that was the time, with no man, he is still alive, he is in London, he, had, he was acting general manager. That was the time they sold, they, they stopped the railway. Jamil Sahid Mohammed was the general auctioneer, sold what they could, gave the ministers and Shaka Stevens what they promised, and the railway ceased to exist. I was not in cabinet. I did not even see the papers. They kept everything about the closure of the railway until they were sure that I was not in cabinet. Because had I been in cabinet, I would have raised hell. And when I say I raised hell in cabinet, not even the president would stop me. It would have, it would have been calamitous because I would have made it not a national issue but an international issue, and they knew that. And they wanted to silence me. So they made quite certain that I was out of cabinet when they took the decision to close the railway quickly and to dispose of the assets. So when people say, I closed the railway, yeah, that hurts. Because I had done everything to save the railway, I had done everything to develop the railway, even to from the standard of a little two foot six inches gauge to four feet two inches a standard European gauge. I had done everything to get the crowd agents at Millbank to ensure that whatever this man was closing his name comes and goes. The, chopping up the, the, the British Railway, whatever they did was, they would give me, I was responsible only to transport it, I wasn't going to pay a penny for all these things. Same thing with software sales, same thing with the German railway system. And then people start saying that, I, I just out of hate that I closed the railway, or oh, that I was SLPP, I was this, I was that, that I closed the railway. You can imagine it. It, 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 it has really been, as I said, 
one of the so points, the most so points in my life. Because even when I wrote this book and I sent it to the Department of African Studies at Frave College, for their comments. The, I think it was the assistant director of African Studies who reviewed it. And among other things, even though I had written all, everything what I've told you now, I, I had explained how the railway was sold in my absence. She said, he still has one important thing to do to explain how he sold the railway. You can understand. It's in the book. You look at it. The, mm. As I said, it's one of the most painful things in my life. I could have taken issue, but I decided God has taken me out of Sierra Leone politics and I should not start reviving all these things. I just decided, like the Englishman says, let sleeping dogs lie.